This opportunity is madness. Everyone else is lying to you. How lucky we are to have Instagram, yet you all hate it. That's like me saying, oh, I want to be a librarian, but I don't really like books or being inside. I don't understand where your time's gone. I'll tell you where it's gone. On Gov. Hello. Uh, in this video, we are going to show you what you can expect from an online coaching business in year one, year two, year three, and year four. So watch to find out. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Biceps and Banter, which is what our channel is still called. But you know that because you're here watching it. Welcome. We didn't want you here. You're yeah, here now. You're here now, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're going to talk about the expectations around online coaching business and what to expect. And this is probably going to be uh, slightly different to what everyone else is going to say out there because everyone else is lying to you, uh, for want of a better term, um, with this. And we're going to talk a little bit about kind of like the realities of running your own business, the realities of running an online business, certainly in terms of social media, but also like what to expect in terms of financials, in terms of how you're viewing this sort of stuff, comparing it to maybe a normal job, dare I say a normal job. Because a lot of people get into this line of work because they're fed up of their normal job. Um, that's pretty fair to say. I'd say most people, I, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess that, so. Or they want a bit more freedom or they want a little bit more yeah, they, you know, life on their own terms, whatever it is. And we're going to talk a little bit about the expectations around that and then also the reality of what that's going to look like for the first five years, arguably, uh, and what you can expect. And if you want to increase those expectations of, you know, what you can expect from your business, um, join our members group because you're better getting good advice like you you know you're putting yourself in a better position to to have greater expectations yeah. if you don't join it what can you actually expect if you don't um invest, in invest 99 pounds mm. into your business um i put up a probably less than what you charge for your coaching huh? yeah i put up a story the other day i was like what are you actually waiting for if it's 99 pounds you're happy to spend it on a night out you're happy to spend it on a new pair of jordans you're ha happy to spend it on a supplement stack you're happy to spend it on fucking some other shite that that mm. as a coach you're the latest drop of the vanquish launch or whatever right it's 99 pounds for your business like so if you haven't done it why aren't you doing it simple so oh, yeah. expectations i think the first expectation to kind of go into is the amount of work needed. So this this expectation of, oh, I want to dish to nine to five because this looks this looks cushy. My uh, my argument to this is always the same, um, and it's if you were prepared to work nine to five for someone else's business, why the hell would you not work more hours for your own? I, I cannot get my head around it. Like you know, if you clock in and clock out nine to five, fair enough. Like just do those hours, go in half hour, sit and get out. If this is for your business and you're the one that gets everything from it, why would you have that attitude of doing less than that? It's because it's sold to you. It's like, so, it, it, it's sold these days of like, um, you, it, you can grow a fitness business in under 10 hours a week. You can't. Can't. Like, technically, you might be able to grow a business, but just common sense, do you think you are more likely to grow a business in 20 hours or 10? 20. 30 hours or 20? 30. 40 hours or 30? 40. Okay, so do 40 then. So then is it more time off? Because if you know that you're making it more likely you're going to be a success in 40 hours as opposed to 10, well, you would do the 40, surely, wouldn't you? Why would you, why would you do 10 and it take longer? Again, we had this conversation over, over training this morning where it was like, you, you said something about people say it's not just hard work. Uh, uh, I think it was like Gary Stevenson was like, it, yeah. it's difficult to work your way out of poverty. But it can be done. It's, like, yeah, it's difficult. It's not impossible. There's a difference. Like, it, it can be done. And I said, well, we wouldn't be where we're at without hard work. If we'd have worked half as hard, I don't think we'd be as half as far as what we are. Like, if we were content, let's say 40 clients, 50 clients, or whatever that is, you know, great wage and, and stuff like that, but we wouldn't be where we're at. What's got us to where we're at is the hard work. It, it wasn't from more, taking more time off and getting our hair cut in a day and going to the gym whenever we wanted and stopping off and doing the Tesco shop. It wasn't that. Because the expectation is, is that that's what this job is. Is that <laughs> I make a few posts on Instagram, I get a few online clients, I can go to the gym when I want. Oh, it's such an easy life. If only it was that easy. Yeah. And, and, and this, that's, that's the one that I hate the most. Is I'll make a few posts on Instagram and then I'll get a few clients in. It's like, really? Is that what you really think happens? Because then I challenge people on that. And I go, right, okay, who do you follow on Instagram that you like? Oh, I love this guy's stuff. Love, love that guy's stuff. Okay, so you like Sam Forth, Sam C. Forth on Instagram. You just liked his video that you saw. You know, it was about a 40-second video. Do you realize that took him at least four hours to make, that 40-second video? 
What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The time and effort went into scripting it, filming it, doing all the bits, the editing. Yeah. He didn't just go randomly like 20 minutes before 6 p.m. I should probably post something today. No, I'll just make this video. It's hours in the creation process. Dare I say hours in the fucking up process that he's done in all the videos before where he's failed and not done it as well as he would like and the amount of videos he's probably done that have never been posted. It's this massive disconnect that coaches have between posting a bit on Instagram and expecting clients to come in versus what they watch on Instagram and having no understanding of what it takes to achieve that. That's the one that I get frustrated with the most. I get less frustrated with the whole like, oh, I want to be on the 10K month within a year, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you've been sold the dream, you've been sold this. Mine is the complete lack of understanding of what it takes to be online. When I say you want to be an online coach and they are, oh, I just don't really like social media, right? Okay. That's like me saying, oh, I want to be a librarian, but I don't really like books or being inside. Probably not going to be the best job for me in the world, is it, right? I'd be a good librarian, actually, I reckon, to be fair. You would. Because I wouldn't have to speak to people. wouldn't yeah. have to show my personality. It'd be great. Um, but it's like, I don't know where librarian, librarian came from, by the way. Very strange. Um, but it, it's, it's this whole thing around, like, you have to immerse yourself in the online world. You, you have to, um, to be an online coach. And, and like I said, it's this interpretation that they can just swan off all day and then turn on their phone on Instagram for 10 minutes, write something on a caption like, oh, uh, motivation is doing the things you want to do um, even when you don't feel like doing it. And I'm sat there going... Do you hear yourself? Like, like you're doing nothing that you don't want to do. <laughs> like, yeah, you're posting on Instagram with some inspirational quote alongside your physique that you've done at a photo shoot three years ago. Um, it's, it's that. It's the, it's the expectation that you can just post and people come flocking to you. Yeah. Um, for me, it, it, it's like, so two points on that, is that if you're an online coach and you don't want to be online, aka make content, put up stories, actually follow our advice if you don't want to do that and you can't put the time and effort in i would liken that to being an in-person pt but not going into the gym how are you ever going to pick up clients if you're not in the gym so now kind of use the same theory of going how am i ever going to pick up clients if i'm not online it's true because whilst you're not online and you're posting twice a week other people are posting 10 times a week so who are they going to go with like who are they going to go with and the second point to that is that this swanning around really winds me up. It really winds me up. Oh, I just don't have enough time to do stuff. Well, we must be living in different, um, on, on a different planet to, to you then because the amount of stuff that we do in our time, but, but you've got 20-something clients. So where's your time gone? I don't understand where your time's gone. I'll tell you where it's gone. On guff, on swanning around, going to the gym, taking your time stopping off at Tesco's, doing your weekly shop, coming back, next day getting your hair cut, going and meeting a friend for coffee. That's where it's gone. You do have the time, but you're choosing to mm. waste it. And then if my argument is, if you want to do that, because online coaching is flexible hours and you don't want to train at rush hour in the gym at five like everybody else, cool, all right? So go do that. Same with your haircut, okay? Don't want to go after five and stuff like that. Don't really go, want to go on a week and I can get it done in the week. Okay, cool. Do that as well. Well, then work after five then, because that three hours that you've taken out of your day, it needs to go somewhere, doesn't it? It doesn't get raised. You don't mm -hmm. go, oh, write that off. Well, okay, you're working five to late then, like in the evening to compensate for it. No, I don't want to do that either because the other half doesn't like me working. Okay, cool. So now you're choosing to not work as much as what you can. And if you actually totted up the amount of hours that you're sat at your desk doing check-ins or making content or whatever it is that you're doing, if you actually totted it up, it's not 40 hours a week. I'm telling you now it's not because me and Dan have checking days of, I mean, Dan does not have a, even have a Monday, but I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So technically I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. I have three days. And in that time, I've got 115 total clients um, across coaching and fat loss. We do one webinar on a Monday for an hour and a half to the members. We do um, one webinar on a Thursday for an hour um, to clients. I open up two spaces Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, each day for consultations, which are usually filled, filled or out of that eight, six of them every week, easily, um, that, I, that I also take. I then also find time to make content every day. We sit down here and film this. On we a Tuesday? Yeah, on a Tuesday. Yeah, on a, on a check-in day. Sit down and film this. We have a team meeting on a Monday with Jake and Jake for an hour. Um, Anything I'm missing there? Well, you still cut your hair as well. You managed to still cut your hair. Still cut my hair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Managed to do it somehow. I don't know how you do it, mate, with all these so, coaches. So, so I've got all of, all of that going on. Um, 
property stuff going on. Yep. We're having to fill in admin forms and so on and so forth. So we've got all of that going on and all the texts that go with it from 115 clients. So all of them, the WhatsApp support. And I can still get it done. Yeah. So I don't understand when somebody goes, I didn't have time to do this this week. I, 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 I can't get my head I, around I, it. I, the one I hate, it's similar to, exactly the same as you, but the, the example that I hate is when coaches uh, will happily on Instagram, like say to their clients and they'll lecture them, oh, you do have time to go and get your steps and you just rather watch Netflix at eight o'clock. And I'm sat there and I'm like knowing that that coach only two days ago has moaned they don't have the clients they want in. And I know for a fact that they are watching Netflix at 8 p.m. but yet went to the gym at midday and yet haven't been on their phone, haven't posted any decent content that day. And I'm like, it, the hypocr hypocrisy is, is madness. And like Mike said, they're usually from, cli from coaches who've got 20 clients. And I sit there with you and we sit there and go, okay, so that's a day's work at best. It, it, you could probably do more, but it's a day's work. So what are you doing on the other days of the week? That's your Monday. Okay, Mon that's a slow Monday as well, by the way. 20 clients, fat loss clients, 20 clients. You could wake up, go to the gym in the morning, have a coffee, get back for, say, half nine, right? And go through that and still finish at five. That's 20 clients, isn't it? Maths on that, yeah. Easily. And I, and I have a lunch break. What are you doing? What are you doing? In, in, in the other time, because that is the thing that, that, that grinds my gears. Like I said before about the corporate job, nine to five, you moan about it. I don't want to do, why are you not doing nine to five, Monday to Friday in your job? Earn the right. We sit here now, having been in the game, me and Mike together have been doing this five years. And I'm now in a position where I feel like on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday, right? And we said this before on a call. It's like, oh, I feel like they're my days off now. I really feel like I have a day off and I, and I do that. And then I look back at it the other day and I was like, actually, hang on a minute. On that Friday... I had four new clients to set up and I had two late check-ins that I did. Still felt like I was off. On the Sunday, I did two new, uh, two new starters again and I did three emails setting up new clients. Felt like a day off. That would be a full day's work for half of you the way you moan about it. And I'm like, that's a day off for me. I still feel like I'm off. That doesn't feel like a day's work. Anyway, near a day's work. So it's the mentality around it. It's like, I only feel like now in this position where we're in business where I can take those days off and actually go, do you know what? I've really earned that because I've done all that work, all those years of working seven days a week, arguably. Again, I would only look at it at six days a week. Even on a day off, I probably did a few little bits and bobs. Still on my phone, still on WhatsApp, still on Instagram. We did that for years. And it's this expectation people come into it and go, ah. Oh, still doing it. You're still doing it now, exactly, yeah. But, but to me, it doesn't feel as much like work. Even back then, I probably thought, oh, I felt like work. But we're still yeah. doing it now. And it's this expectation that coaches have of like, Oh, I'm just not where I want to be in terms of my business. And I'm sat there going, okay, you came in on 2K a month. You're now at 3.5K a month. Even if you sustain that for the whole year, in what job, in what world, with the hours that you're putting into it, would you get a grand and a half a month pay rise over that year for that amount of work? Well, that's, that's the next expectation, isn't it? You would never do it. No. In a million years. And this is the thing is they want to grow that one and a half K a month every month. Yeah. I'm like, no, even if you grew that for one month and you maintained it for 12 months, that pay rise does not exist. It's 18 grand. It does not exist in most normal jobs at your age with the amount of work you're doing, most importantly, to, to get that. It doesn't happen. But yet for coaches, it's not enough. The expectation is that there should be more, more, more. And yeah. I'm like, you don't deserve it. Yeah. It's, it, it's an entitlement thing. So like today, um, we've trained. We've had breakfast. We've come here. We filmed for two hours. I've got seven client calls, which last half an hour each. I've got two consultations booked in, which are also half an hour each. So that's nine. So that's four and a half hours. I've then got seven um, coach clients, which will take me about another two hours, just over three an hour, probably 20 minutes each. Um, so what's that? That's six and a half hours. Um, and I've got 10 fat loss clients today as well, which will probably take me about an hour and a half, right? So what, what, what are we at there? Eight hours. Eight hours. Two hours here, so that's 10 hours. By the time you get back, it'll be 1 p.m. Yeah, by the, by the time we get back, it'll be, it'll be 1 p.m., right? Why am I working harder than you? Like, yeah. why, why? Why am I working harder than you? I shouldn't be working harder than you. You've got more time than me. Like, so you should be outdoing me. You should be making more content than me, better content than me. Mm -hmm. But you're not. Like, you should be coaching your clients more effectively. You should have better attention than me. I should be dropping the ball more than you, but you're not. Like, you're dropping the ball more than me. Why? Because it's this entitlement that you don't have to work hard. No, you do have to work hard. Mm -hmm. We're still working hard, and we've got, it sounds wanky, but we've, we've got more money than we need. The business has more revenue than we need. We don't need that. Like, we're working for a future. The reason why we're working hard is because we want to retire sooner. That's it. That's where we're at. 
yet coaches will complain that their revenue isn't growing if it's not growing or if it's not growing at the rate that they want yet don't put the hours in to do it yeah so, it's, it's, it's that for me it's that I, I believe that coaches are paid exactly what they're worth that's my argument is you're, you're exactly where you should be and, and that might sound harsh and most people have probably turned off at this point because we talked about hard work we talked about actually putting some effort in so most people have turned off at this point you haven't you're still watching it great but I believe you're exactly where you deserve to be. That's my honest opinion. For 99% of coaches, you are where you deserve to be. There's the odd exception, of course. Most of you are exactly where you deserve to be. I want to point the finger at the members group. Like, you'll see people come in, not action anything for a month, and then dip out. Great. Cool. It tells us everything we need to know, by the way. We don't want you. It tells us everything I need to know. We're not going to follow up with you and say, uh, you know, try to get you in or whatever. It tells us exactly what you want. You are not ready to action anything you're not prepared to sit down devote time learn and implement cool fuck off then no yeah. problem instead we want the people that actually want to graph that want to work hard because you see the results of people that want to do that you see them littered all over our page like you see any of the results that are up they work hard that's it and and, and the reality the reality of it is if you look at you know maybe maybe let's say you look at a ten thousand pound investment over a year right if i was to say to you right you're going to invest ten thousand pound in one year and at the end of that year, you're going to get back £20,000. Most people in finance would go, I'll do that. Yep. They'd go, I'll do that. They, they, would, they would give you that money there and then, right? And what we're telling you is that with a £10,000 investment, you can work with one of us, right, for a year, right? We're not spare a lot front, by the way. And, we, uh, and after that year, you could be £20,000 better off. Most coaches at the end of that year would moan that it's not enough. They would moan that they're not where they want to be because they've only gained, like I said, what would be £1,700 a month. Is that right? I think it was roughly, maths is roughly right on that. £1,700 a month increase in revenue, right? Per, uh, again, on, on a month, let's say you increase that and you just sustain it for the whole year. And that would be an extra what if you charge 170, 10 clients? That is, that is phenomenal. That is, by the way, phenomenal return. It's ridiculous. Phenomenal return. And for coaches, it's not enough. For anybody that knows um, what a normal rate of um, interest that you would get from like stocks and shares, right? About 8%. Averages out to about 8%. Um, what's interesting in your, in your savings account? Four, Four if you look at it. 4%. So 4%, let's just say your interest in your savings account, 4% of a £10,000 investment is 400 quid across the year. 8% of £10,000, it's right, isn't it? Mm. Is, is, is £800. Pounds. And that's in stocks and shares, in finance. Like the highest possible returns outside of, you know, probably looking at some property stuff, which requires more capital than £10,000, put it that way. Um, so stocks and shares will get you £800. Like, like Dan just said there, if you get an extra 10 clients and you maintain that for a year... It's phenomenal. It, it, it's, a ridic it's a ridiculous amount of money. So the next expe expectation is, what are you expecting to happen with your finances? Stop looking at the, the major, major success stories. And if you are looking at the major, major success stories, don't look at the result, look at the process, look yeah. at what they did. Look at the Rowan doing um, check-ins at a wedding, going back up to the room and doing check-ins at a wedding, mm -hmm. being a dentist and a full-time online coach with 50 clients whilst he was still dent being a dentist, full-time dentist. Like, look at the process of what they did. Look at Will and Sam, Me Sam, mental health nurse, um, Managing a, managing a full hospital, managing staff, will, lift fitter, kids, um, husband, like Sam's got a kid as well. Um, building up a business. If, if you want to look at the result, look at the, look at the process, but you don't, want, you don't want to do the process. Instead, you look at the result. Oh, so no what's, what are you expecting to happen? Like, so like Dan's just said there, if, 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 if you can add an extra grand a month to your income, it's still 12 grand for the year. No, nobody gets a pay rise like that without actually doing something, without actually going, do you know what? You've passed this exam and now you, you're now not a junior X. You are now a senior X or you've passed mm. this. You, you've become accredited or you've, you've, um, you've, you've become a chartered accountant and now you're not a regular accountant. So it comes with a hefty pay rise. But you've actually got to have done something. Yeah, put the hours of work like, and all the graft and all the weekends and all the evenings <laughs> revision. Like literally. And it's like, ah, it's not enough. Didn't, it's not enough. Instead, I'm looking at um, how, how can we hit 10K months? 10K months, if you're starting at 2K, right? That's 8K a month, obviously. So you're talking, that's 96K you're wanting in return for whatever your investment is. So let's just say it is 10K across the year is your investment. 
you're, you're basically wanting fucking 86 grand back off that 10k where on earth are you ever going to get those returns with any kind of investment ever and and, and even with that it's the time investment is, is, the, is the thing is like it doesn't even cost you anything it's just your time most majority of it is like you can action this stuff and just go and go and earn this amount of money if you action it properly but coaches again don't want to see like we, we look at stocks and shares and stuff like that and we look at okay if we invested X amount for 8% over the next 15 years where are we going to be coaches are like where am I going to be in 15 days I'm like you're thinking about this all wrong mate like you need to be looking at 2026 2027 where's my business going to be what do I want it to look like how many clients do I want like that's what you should be focused on. It's this re expectation versus reality of like, okay, the reality is the people that make it onto our page that get to those numbers, I, 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 maybe we should change it and we should put alongside the money the amount of hours invested as well, but it would put you off, wouldn't it? It would put people off because they're like, oh, I don't want to do that much work. That's the problem. That's, that's your battle. That's the, the only difference between them and you, arguably, I think the only, one of the differences is just that they put all those hours in and they're prepared to work harder. Mm. I hate to say it because I think it sounds a little bit reductionist to say that. But it's a huge part of it. When I look at the clients that I work with and I'm like, oh, you've got 20 clients. So I've got enough, not enough time in the day to watch the videos you've tagged me in. I'm like, what do you mean? What, you do. What are you, what are you doing then? You what do. are you doing? Because we tag you in two to three per week tops. About five hours a week studying, max. <laughs> yeah. Think Like Mike said about those accountants, think how many hours a week they spend studying for this stuff and you're not going to do that for, for, again, for a bigger pay rise, for a bigger payout, for a bigger potential you know return it's 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 bonkers to me and you've been sold a lie by people who are telling you it's easy they're telling you that all you got to do is post on instagram use this template content use this camera image use this hundred templates that i've got download them for two pound it's do you, you do realize they're selling you this stuff and selling it for two pound because it doesn't fucking work don't you you didn't realize that if it was that good they'd be selling it for more than that wouldn't they like think about it think about it logically you don't go for that shit online you don't ever look at someone's template and content oh i must sign up with this guy and pay him loads of money do you no you don't Sometimes you've just got to work harder. Sometimes you just have to work harder. And, and, it, and it baffles me, like I said, going back to the starting point, is that people are prepared to leave a job or they say, oh, I don't like working on the gym floor. There's too many hours on the gym floor. Yet they will not put the same amount of hours into their own business. It's true. You, you probably do have the greatest opportunity being in this business. Like this is a huge, huge opportunity to be able to earn money that you didn't think was possible. But only if you work hard but only if you work as hard as possible. Like, like, this opportunity is madness. Like, it really, really, really is. There's not many industries or sectors that can allow somebody with no qualifications to, I don't want to say easily, but if they work hard, earn more than a doctor. Like, in, in, in quite a sh short amount of well, time, really. You look at Rowan as an example. Like, he's a full-time dentist, does really well, private practice, he works hard, done all that study, all that, and he's... And he's stopping that to be an online coach. So what does that tell you about the, the possibilities here? Again, if you're prepared to work hard, I think someone like Rowan looks at it and goes, well, he knows how hard he worked to yeah. become a dentist. And he's like, hang on a minute, if I worked a little bit harder than that, I could get that. Yeah, you could, Rowan. Okay, I'll do it then. That's the difference. It's all well and good looking at it and going, oh, if a dentist doing it, it must be all right. Yeah, but you don't see the hours he's putting. Make sure you're matching his hours. If you're not matching those hours, you're not going to match the outcome that he's got as well. Don't miss this opportunity by your own inability to work hard like, don't miss it like o o honest to god yeah <laughs> we are in the perfect storm time-wise in terms of where social media is how lucky we are to have instagram yet you all hate it fuck me it's changed my life i don't like posting but instagram being there and social media being there has changed my life Ch it's changed the oh, course I don't, of my get, I don't get a reach i deserve <laughs> you do the you get the you get exactly the reach you yeah. deserve based on how much time you put into your content it's changed the course of my family's life yeah. because of it like yeah. it, it's madness so complaining about it and not working hard you are looking a gift horse in the mouth like you really really are you dicking around getting to the gym finding around doing what you want like taking all yeah it's wicked that all your friends are kind of in the nine to five and you're the one that's taking loads of time off but secretly you know that you're a little bit scared that your business is going to collapse. That mm -hmm. secretly, you're not getting all the sign-ups that you really want. So do something about it. Yep. Next expectation, last one, is the expectation that you should like everything that you do within your business. That oh, really winds me up. Like, I just don't enjoy it. Okay, brilliant. It, it, it's like, you're not going to like every client and you're not going to like the jobs that you have to do. Like... A lot of us probably got into coaching because we liked nutrition and, and training and we maybe liked the gym. And 
we kind of see that, oh, okay, we'll, we'll turn my, my passion into my job and we'll never work again. No, because it, it is your job. Mm -hmm. So you are working. So you become less passionate about it because it's what you do every single day, day in, day out. The reason why it was your passion before is because you were choosing to do it for four to five hours a week outside of your nine to five. And now it should be, as we've just alluded to, your nine to five plus whatever. Mm. So the expectation is that you should like it. You, nobody said that you should like posting on social media. Where is that written down anywhere? Nobody's expecting you to like it. So if, if you're not the type of person that likes social media and it doesn't come natural, okay, you're not the type of person that likes social media. Does it change what you have to do on social media? Nope. No, it doesn't. It doesn't change a fucking thing. So when I was working, you know, in the Air Force and I got a call from my boss, I say a call, I sat in the crew room, nice and warm, playing pool with the lads, 3 a.m. rolls around, snowing, hailing, windy, you got to go and service five jets, 3 a.m. Do I like doing that? No. Did I do it? Yeah. Why? Because it's my job. I get paid for it. Okay. Now take that same principle and go, okay, do you like posting on social media? No. But do you do it anyway? Yes. Why? Because it's your job and you get paid for doing it. That's it. So it's not a good enough excuse to go, I don't really like doing that. Mm. Okay. Well, don't then. And if you don't like it so much that it prevents you from doing it consistently, don't be an online coach. It's that simple. Yeah. That's the thing. It's a choice. You've got choices here. Like this is no one's forcing a gun to your head saying you've got to do it. Just pick a different job. Just pick a different job. Like I did. Like I didn't like, like working in the Air Force <laughs> enough. So I picked a different job. Exactly that. And I think there's this there's this there's this common difference here with, with people that of getting fulfillment from your job and loving your job. I believe I get massive fulfillment from my job. I, feel, I, I really enjoy the fact that I can help people and change their lives, change their perspective on things, change, like Mike just said there, not only his own family's life, but arguably other families' lives. Like I get a great sense of like achievement and fulfillment, I would say, from that. I wouldn't say I love my job. I think that's a, I don't know if that word can be used to, to describe a job because I think by definition, a, a job is always something that you do to create something else or to do something else in your life. And I, I think people who say they love their job, I think I'm like, I think you mis misconstruing the word with fulfillment because would I do what I do without getting paid for it? No. Probably not. I think I would love stuff. If I, I love playing golf, when I go and play, I don't get paid. I have to, I have to pay to play it. Therefore, I love it. Well, yeah, that, that's for me is, would be the definition of it. I get great fulfillment from my job and I have aspects of my job enjoy and I have aspects that I do not enjoy, but I do it anyway because of the fulfillment and because of the financial reward that I get on the back end of it. I think that's okay to say. I don't know. I don't think you, you, that's a bad thing to say out loud, but it is that aspect of clients, coaches certainly go, oh, I love the gym. I love nutrition. I love training. So if I make it my job, I'll never work again. In, incorrect massively incorrect because when you get good at it you actually start to not go to the gym as much and love it you actually stop going to eat as well and all those other things because it's not your it's not your thing you do outside of work anymore because it's now your work there's always an element of work involved with this and that's what we talk about hard work is people have misconstrued this well yeah but i want to love my job but and i always think well you're never going to work hard at it then because the, the whole point of loving something would be that you don't really have to spend loads of time doing loads of hard work on it I don't know, maybe I've misconstrued it, but there is an element to it. Like I said, Mike's job there with the RF, didn't love it. We had to work really, really hard to it. I would say, well, you're never going to, if you have to work hard, you have to get up at 3 a.m. to yeah. do those things. You're not going to love it. You're going to love the end product of the money that comes with it and the security. And that's what you're doing is you just get massive fulfillment from your job that you can help change people's lives and you can enjoy aspects of it. But it's okay to not bounce out of yeah. bed loving every single job you've got to do that day like it's just the expectation that they're going yeah. to love that they're going to love it that oh mike I'm, I'm sick of these clients i don't really like working with these clients right well, okay oh beggars can be choosers now can they yeah well i, I used to work with footballers and i think there's a, there's a big thing with uh, did i say that you saw footballers. Mm. um there's a big thing with footballers are like oh they must just love their job i can guarantee you now they, they rock into the training ground they do not love yeah, their no. training they do not love it they call it work i'm going to work i've yeah. seen them call it i've seen them going i'm to off work. to work yeah Going to work. They might love the trophies and the, 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 the stadium full of people at the end of it. Well, that's the bit that they enjoy about it. They get fulfillment from. I tell you what, you know when they're doing pre-season, they're running laps around the pitches. They don't love it. They don't love it. They're literally there going, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Loving something would be doing it and choosing to do it over doing something else. Like, I would choose to go on holiday than go to work because I prefer to go on holiday, right? So, like, if people love, truly love their job, they would do it regardless of anything else that they could do. How many of us can actually sit here and go, if, you could, if money wasn't a factor and you could plan your perfect week, how many of you would go check-ins from nine to five? You wouldn't. No. So it's a lie, isn't it, then, yeah. to love your job? You're doing it because it gets you somewhere. You can like what you do and you can enjoy aspects of your job, but you're not going to love it. 
Like, of course you're not going to love it. So why are you expecting to? And that expectation of that everything needs to be perfect in your business and all the pieces need to stack up together and go, yeah, I love my social media. And yeah, I love writing copy. And yeah, I love every single client that works for me. Why, why are you trying to strive for that? Like, that's not going to happen. And it's only going to make you feel more negative about what's actually happening. And you kind of have to accept that. Do you know what? It is a bit of a ball ache to post every day. Fuck me, but I'm going to have to do it. It is a bit of a ball ache to work with the clients that are a bit of a pain in the arse that I don't really bond with, but it's my job to do it. Like, I don't understand. So, I, I always come up with this framing thing where I go, like you just said there, ball ache. I always think then, ball ache compared to what? So I have to post on Instagram every day. Oh, that's a ball ache. Compared to what? Because compared to servicing jets at 3 a.m. in the morning, it's a fucking piece of piss, right? Compared to going in an operating theater and having to operate on someone's fucking brain and knowing that one tiny move you do wrong could result in them dying, to walk in the fucking park, right? There's plenty of people out there who do jobs that get paid far less, nurses, all this sort of stuff. Like, there's, I could go into some really extreme examples, but I'm not. But, like, the point is that they're, compared to what? Compared to doing nothing. Yeah, it's a ball ache compared to doing nothing. But compared to some of the other jobs out there people do, and compared to maybe your, some of your old jobs, it's a piece of piss. So my, my parents, my dad's a lorry driver, my mum's a cleaner. They both get up around 5 a.m. Um, my mum finishes a little earlier than my dad, I think, but my dad will finish about 5 p.m. Freezing, dark mornings, dark nights, driving a lorry. I earn more in a month than they do combined for a year. Um... I earn double what they earn combined for a year in a month. Not really that much of a ball lately, is it? Like, it's okay, isn't it? So, and sometimes I have to check myself a little bit and go, oh, God, fucking hell, today's long. We all yeah, do. We all do. Not as long as my dad's. Mm -hmm. It's not as long as, you know, hundreds, thousands of, of other people, millions of other people. Not that long. It's okay. I'm sat in my nice office, comfortable, chatting to people for a day. It's okay. It could be worse. So change the, the expectation of what, A, you expect to happen. And like Dan has just said, ball ache compared to what? Because you could be choosing any other profession and see, see, see what happens then. Because we've got this quite good, trust me. So work hard at it. There you go. Expectations reality. Hope you enjoyed that one. Join a members group if you want. It's 99 quid. And you get loads more gold information like this. So we actually help you action this stuff rather than just tell you to work harder on it. Just catch you in a bit. Ugh.